Well, hello there, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages. My name is Dogboat333, and welcome back to Hearts of Iron 4, the new order of last year's Europe as Comey. Now, in the last video, we started really challenging the orthodoxy of old Suslobe over here, the Red Eminence. And uh, Yuri Andropov. Oh, I know him. Also, um, the despotist are uh, sons of bitches. The front can fuck off. But we'll worry about that in a sec. We're gonna go ahead and um, reestablish with Congress of Soviets. Before one can work through the nitty-gritty of governance, they must establish the foundations of democratic rule. In the days of the old Soviet Union, the Congress of Soviets was a legislator of a people, representing everyone from Belarus to the Tajik Republic. Reestablishing the Congress and turning Comey's legislator into a bicameral affair will offer proper representation to further the advances of socialism. Surely it's just a coincidence that the Soviets are the state institution who support Prokhorina's policies the most. It's not to say that the presidium will be modified in any way, but the Congress of Soviets will elect only representatives of local Soviets, largely supporters of Bukharina. Ah, I get it. Ah. I've seen the I've seen the wave of tides turning, comrade. There's no future in the past. But there is one with you. Svetlana Bukharina's eyebrow raised. Well, I'm glad you've se well. I've seen. I'm glad you've seen my light, comrade Ed Andropov. You'll need to forgive me for your disbelief. You served as Suslov's attack dog for years. How can I trust you? Andropov shrugged. He expected the suspicion and had come prepared. From within his overcoat pocket, he withdrew a small pocketbook and held it out to the woman. As she opened it, her eyes widened, and Yuri couldn't help but smile. <laughs> All your opponents' dirty little secrets. Things that surely turned the party against him if they somehow leaked. Comrade Andropov, I have the feeling that this will be the start of a very beneficial friendship for the both of us. I hope so too, Comrade Bukharina. I hope so. Almost there. Yeah. Um. No longer get the effects of revitalized Soviet patriotism. Amstoles. We established a Congress of the Soviets. Um. The name of liberation. Social liberation, the unshackling of the minorities, is the chief of chief importance in Bukharina. For millennia, women have been oppressed by men in a horde cycle of sexism that never seems to end. Without socialist thought, it is not unthinkable that all women could still be relegated to the position that once occupied in pre-modern life. The rise of Bukharina and the Communist Party has shown the power of Marxist thought to overcome reprehensible social norms. For the first time in history, a woman seems poised to take former control of the Republic. However, the f oppression of women is not the only form of social oppression in the Republic. The disabled, those with mental and physical disabilities, are shunned from their families and find it difficult to find work. People belonging to the Comey ethnic group find it difficult to advance in career fields and face a great deal of inequality with their Russian brethren. While most of the populace are staunch believers in the Orthodox Church's teachings, there are a few thousand Muslims, old believers, and Comey native religious believers who are forced to live in small segregated communities and are discriminated against in such innocent acts as crossing the streets. The law must not tolerate this. The Soviets, both local and national, will legislate against these injustices immediately. Let's do it. <clears throat> Chairwoman Bukharina has passed Party Directive A-227 to go into effect immediately. Directive A-227 is a wide-ranging directive that, in effect, makes the legislature or bicameral. The Congress of Soviets has had more power moved to it, and the way it is staffed has been changed. Local municipals will send representatives that make up 50% of Congress, while trade unions hold the other 50% of the seats. This also weakens the power of the Presidium, so a large amount of its authority and power has been handed over to the Congress of Soviets. 
While Orthodox Marxist Leninists oppose the move, many Bukharina supporters praise it as a step forward, as now more power is vested in the people than before. All power to the Soviets. We're doing good. I'm happy with how we're doing. I really am. Perhaps we're a bit behind on the reunification time scale, but we'll figure that out shortly, but swiftly. This is a good way to put it. War borders. Wow, okay. Yeah, I did not think South Africa would survive that. Holy shit. Um, whew. You know what props to them for bullshitting their way through? The name of liberation. The stars are risen. The former faction was once relegated to the margins of internal politics party politics. Its voice was silenced by orthodox suppression, relentless attack within the party's official platform. No longer are dissident voices suppressed. All oppressed may cry free. The reformers are no longer the coalition of rising stars they once were. It is the ruling strand of the party. The orthodox fallen faction are now the one sidelined. With the rapid rise to power comes far more responsibility. The faction, now much of the party, must seize the general secretaryship and begin talks to perform a formal government to rule the republic. We may only hope that we keep our to our ideals as we finally take the reins of power. The stars are risen. Ah, we did it, Patrick. We saved the Soviet Union. Actually, not quite yet. Let's, let, let's hold off on that. So Karna wins the war, and he's probably going to get cooed. That isn't an option for the event chain. He might not be, but he probably will be cooed. Hungry sides with Italy. Interesting. The People's PM. Old Margaret Thatcher. No, uh, wait. Margaret Thatcher! She's, um, hanging in there. Doing a good job. And she's part of the OFN now. Okay. That whole joining whichever faction seems kind of glitched. Sverdlovsk has won. Let's take down the despots while we can. The front, despite their noble fight against the Germans, have proven to be nothing than revisionists. If they are allowed to succeed, Russia will become nothing more than a military junta backed by the image of communism. We must declare war and put an end to this farce of communism before they are put an end to us. Forwards, soldiers. Yep, Suharto's cooed it. Honestly, I'll just deploy these guys right now. What better way of getting experience than just flinging these guys into the fucking fire after all? Out of the flames, into the fire. Forget how- I haven't heard- listen to that. That mixtape in a long while. It's a good one. I really should give it a, another shot one of these times, but... I don't know, just like, it's not on Spotify. I'm talking about, um, Ex Military by uh, Death Grips, if you don't know. Um, it's a good little mixtape. Maybe some of my favorite Death Grips works in general, uh, tracks in general, but it's not on Spotify. I had to get, was it, Dat Biff for it? And it's the only mixtape I have on Dat Biff. Because everything else is on fucking Spotify, so why would I bother with anything else? You know? Talk down the Despotist. Yeah, let's move. Uh, 
uh, while we are here. This will all bypass. So what do we want to do? With the Bureau of Ideological Analysis or force him to resign. Cool. Resignation. Encourage him. He's not obliged to resign per se. We force him to resign, or we can give him. A little promotion. Which, from my understanding, is just for forcing him to the fucking back. Um. I'll do the Bureau of Ideological Analysis. Since. Sinecure is a particular is a peculiar word. One might argue, in fact, that the role of a sinecure simply does not exist in Marxist thought. After all, from each according to his ability to each according to his needs. What harm does a so-called useless job bring if every man is entitled to his needs? That's not to say that Suslov is receiving a sinecure as harmless as that would be. In fact, he is to be promoted. A man of a stature should not be relegated to bureaucratic work and party squabbling. A new bureau has been created, of which he is the head. The bureau, the bureau of ideological analysis, will be one in which Suslov has the sole power to resolve contradictions between the party platform and establish Leninist doctrine. This is a there is a very real possibility that this bureau may potentially influence some facets of. Leninist doctrine in the coming years, and may even lead to some suggestions offered to the Cos Congress of the Soviets. Truly marvelous. We'll do it. <clears throat> and in your capacities, as head of Directorate of Revolutionary Preservation, your duties will, in will ensure... Oh, will ensure the immediate cessation of counter-revolutionary activity wherever it may rear its ugly head, ensuring the safety of a Soviet state and keeping people safe from all other hidden threats. Do you understand, Comrade Andropov? Yuri smiled. I do, Comrade Bukharina. This was it, then. The bet he had made such a long time ago in Siktivkar had finally paid off, from fixer to intelligence director. Not a bad career path, if he said so himself. Good, Bukharina continued. Then I believe we're gun done here? Yuri moved to exit her office. And Yuri, she spoke okay, she left. She tur he turned to face her, surprised to see a genuine smile on her face. Good luck. He returned the smile with his one of his own. Somewhere along the line, they'd actually become friends, it seemed. You too, comrade. You too. I realize I never read her thing. Daughter of a Soviet Union. Some nice bonuses I'll get. Svetlana Nikolaevna Bukharina was brought up at the very top of a Soviet society, being the daughter of General Secretary Nikolai Bukharin. She spent her youth in the Union's best academies, attending galas and cultural exhibitions within the party's uppermost echelons, and carefully observing her father's debates and political maneuvers. When the Union disintegrated and Bukharin vanished, so did Svetlana. Rumors flew that she had escaped with her father and gone into hiding, gotten disappeared by a political rival or even hiding in a secret bunker complex beneath Moscow. Those rumors were quashed when she eventually resurfaced in Siktivkar, capital of the relatively democratic post-Soviet Republic of Koming. But her idle years had not stalled her political edge. Many in Komi's socialist movement saw that having her as a figurehead would be a massive propaganda coup, and he quickly worked to gain her willing support. But they did not anticipate that she would have ambitions of her own. Through careful manipulation and backroom deals, Svetlana was able to build up a powerful support base and ended up launching an internal coup against the ideologues who once tried to control her. Now that she sips on top of Comey's political ladder, few wonder, people wonder, or fear, what her next move will be. Few people believe that her vaulting ambition has run out, and many suspect she may soon turn her eyes toward the rest of her father's former domain. 
Oh, until then. Yeah, the shield's been broken. Could have told you that was going to happen. Can we just take Arkhaljensk? Just see if we can tap him out right here, right now. Seems like we might actually be able to. <laughs> hey, Maxon! You hear the news about Suslov? Got tucked away right in the Bureau for ideological analysis. Who hasn't? Almost feel sorry for the guy. Relegated to doing paperwork that will never be read by anyone. Party leadership said it's promotion, but if I were in that position, I'd want to blow my brains out. I mean, it's better than getting shot or disappeared. Maybe if things get bad, he could even find a, himself a decent position and turn to his current promotion into an actual promotion. I don't see it happening. The body seems pretty stable right now. I think Suslov will be screaming in his forgotten little corner of headquarters for a long time to come. Eh, uh, you're probably right. Seems ironic to me that such an ambitious guy like Suslov would get purged through a promotion of all things. The perfect position for a man like Suslov. I mean, I could have killed him. So. You can always remember that. I could have killed him. Only in death does duty end. We'll core this up. We'll incorporate our Helgensk. Despite the attempts at the front, the Germans were able to successfully bomb the far, nor far north very heavily. Many of the roads and railroads are in ruins, and the towns and cities need to be rebuilt in order to be of any use. It's therefore prudent that we send economic aid northwards. The economic aid will be focused on the Arkhangelsk Oblast. It's been the most potential for development, but it's also bombed the most. We shall build new factories, restore the railroads, and modernize the houses. This economic development should allow for the north to quickly become a productive part of the country, allowing for us to have a stronger and economic base as we move up against the rest of the warlords. Beautiful. So we have one more loot. So we'll sc scavenge for loot one more time while we're here. And while we're waiting for all of our stuff to prepare, um, we'll send these guys eastward. get some artillery boys will it be enough yeah we got enough we'll get exercising these guys some of these are still greens so they could use a little bit of help so all of this is gonna bypass I can tell you that right now It's going to be beautiful to see. It really will be. Yep. Completed. The West is ours. Despite all the odds being stacked against us, we've managed to bring all of West Russia under one banner, a feat not seen since the 50s. However, our conquests, while glor glorious, were swift, and we must devote our energies towards consolidating our new lands. We must ensure that Perma Scourge clean of the Brotherhood, the last RA soldier, are captured. And most importantly, we must end lawlessness present in our lands. It would be a difficult task, but one that is necessary is we cannot afford our state to be on the brink of total anarchy. That's what the Black Army wanted, and they're not around now, are they? Exactly. Because we don't want that. Yeah, we still have to get these guys out of a green stage. Still missing a bit of artillery over here a little bit. Now that'll get figured out shortly enough. Okay, so we can go ahead and build. What do we want to do? We'll go with new schools, I'm thinking. Yeah, new schools. Yeah, 
And these guys are almost out of the green stage. Beautiful. We can get some of these guys up to regulars. The West is ours. Let's prepare our industries. While our increased access to resources combined with our new conquest, the time has come to expand our industrial output. Firstly, we must integrate the Samaran industry into our own. Their output must be factored into our planning and industrial production. Secondly, we must begin to build new factories in our lands. Our access to resources allows us uh, allows for our industry to diversify, letting us produce different products. With a combination of Samaran industry and new factories, we can be prepared for the future wars, and we can support our industrial workers, which is a core part of our mandate. Yeah, we'll let this upgrade real quick. Horizontal organization. More drill secures Britain leadership. Uh, yeah, that's not really news. I don't care about that. More organization. You know, honestly, that, um... That extra research slot sounding pretty tempting right about now. Then again, that supply consumption is going to be uh, consumption is going to be a bit of a pain, so I kind of want to hold off a bit, at least until we start up this war and finish it. Speak, uh, not speaking of troops, I don't know why I thought of that. Um, these boys are just about ready. Um, we might get these guys just ready to deploy sooner, honestly. No vote. Odskinsk. More artillery. Better rifles. To do early fighters. Maybe some strategic bombers. That'd be good. Prepare our industries. We'll do... Yeah. We have our, all six of our planes ready to go. We can raise the red banner. I think we'll do that. Most of our new lands were not run by communists, and it shows. There's a fair amount of apprehension in towards the government. People believe that we will collapse like the old Soviet Union of old. We must spread propaganda and inform the people that it was not communism in the ignis that ruined Russia, but it's the insidious Germans who sought to annihilate us. Furthermore, we must try to encourage people to show pride in the Soviet Union. After all, it was the Soviet Union that was there, that there was peace, not the monarchists of the Russian Republic. We shall raise the red banner of communism in every village and town, so that people see that we have returned to liberate all. Beautiful. Wonderful thought. Ah, my back. That's what I get for sitting in this chair for so long, I guess. It is 2.30. I have... Let's see, my work starts at like 11.20, so it's not that big a deal. What, eight hours? That's 10.30. And I have energy drinks, so I can afford to get like seven hours. It's not the biggest deal, you know? I'm just kind of speaking out loud. I'm trying to figure this out. Raise the red banner. We might want to get some rubber. Can we trade with anyone to get rubber? We have, yeah, we have embargoes with a lot of people, actually. That won't work. Well, who was a... Uh, Alex Jones? Current trade law, Alex Jones. Nice. Alright. If we were to reunite Russia, we need to have access to the full potential of our territory, which is something we lack as of now. While there is some resistance against its primary problems that we lack knowledge of what resources 
what our resources are, and where we can get new resources. Even with us pillaging together everything we have, there's still large swaths of our lands that we know nothing about. Time has come for us to conduct a full survey of West Russia. This survey will include the cities so that we can understand what needs to be rebuilt in the countryside, so we can acquire access to new resources. It may take time, but we need it in order to move forward and unite Russia. Oh, we can move these guys over here, which I think we will. We're moving along pretty well. I don't even care about the black market, honestly. Um, we can scavenge for loot. Also, I think we'll raid them. This will be like a practice real quick, guys. I think it's what our industrial base, our industrial expertise, yeah, needs some improving too. So we'll do this real quick. We'll do some, we'll do in some early industrial robots. All right, well, they're going to be like that. So be it. Not only are you going to be like that, they're actually probably going to win. Okay. Well, the time has come. With the unification of West Russia, the time has come to reclaim Onega. As Ru Finland's a powerful nation, especially when combined with our current army, it's probably easier for us to negotiate with them. We'll reach out to the Finns and propose a conference in Vipori over the Onega issue. This will be our first major international negotiation, and no matter what happens, we must show the world that communism is alive and well in West Russia. All our efforts have built this up, have built up to this. So let's prove to everyone that Russia is more than an anarchic wasteland. Maybe we aren't. Yeah, the raid failed. We'll get the bastards next time. Quite literally, perhaps. I'll just deploy these guys now. Exercise them a little bit. Offensive line, we got this going. A little bit of exercise, and they're done. They're green. They're not green anymore. They're ready to go. And let's see if we can actually go and go to war. I know there are some issues apparently with Setlana Bukarina. Actually, before we do anything. We might as well do it. The Western Soviet Federation unifies West Russia. Nikolai Bukharin may have perished, but his legacy continues to live on, not to a lesser degree because of his offspring. Initially expected to be a mere figure out of the left, intriguers in uh, the Komi Republic, Svetlana Bukharina, the daughter of a former Soviet communist leader, proved herself to be a capable and decisive leader on her own, Ma outmatching her allies and enemies alike ascended as a leader of a socialist Komi. For power assured, Bukharina reunited the rest of West Russia under the Red Banner once again. Acknowledging her father's mistakes, Bukharina nevertheless persists on the communist vision and her hopes of the restoration of the Soviet Union after years of anarchy and decay. Few post-Soviet warlords are willing to pledge their loyalty to the West Russian chairwoman, but Bukharina has not yet run out of her tricks to bring hostile Russians to her states to her will. For the power of the Soviets. We'll do some extraction techniques. And 
I'll do another 10 minutes because I cut that. I'll do 13 minutes. Because, I mean, what's another little bit of lack of sleep? War has been averted between Finland and the Soviet Republic of Western Russia. Diplomats from both nations have said. Okay. Hmm. Seems like the government of the Soviet Republic of Western Russia sought to rapidly end the question on agreeable terms. The Finns are somewhat receptive to talks. Our ambassador informs that Helsinki has agreed to a high-level diplomat conference between our two nations. It's pleasing that the Finns have not done anything rash, and have at least agreed to give us some time to make demands. Some cynics in our government suspect Helsinki of merely stalling for time in order for full mobilization. The fact remains that war can be avoided. Before anything else, however, Helsinki wants to know our terms. Onega must be returned to us. Its population is freed from her janissary due to Finland. That much is essential. It does not mean, however, that the Russo-Finnish frontier should remain a dagger pointed at Finland's heart. We could simply demoralize Onega and sign a non-aggression pact for the foreseeable future. The Finns would likely accept such a deal, and Helsinki would see it as too good to be true. Thus, a better deal would be the result of Onega in full. With our troops in the region, Eastern Karelia would also be integrated to Russia as an autonomous region, with the Finns granted an open border into the region. They, this would return the Arctic port of Murmansk, southwest Karelia, and its critical city of Vyberg, or Vipuri in Finnish, would stay under Helsinki's control. Demilitarized zones and non-aggression tr trees would follow, preventing any future war between our people. Of course, we could just demand it all. No matter how attached the Finns are to Vyborg and Southwest Karelia, their paltry army cannot save them for long. Onega's ramsha ramshackle mob of conscripts will not slow us long if they choose to fight their countrymen at all. The Finns will agree to our demands for Onega and all of Karelia, or pay for their arrogance. We'll save... We'll do them. We want the Russian majority territories. I think that's really reasonable. You know, we're not asking for all of it, just a fair chunk of it. Oh, shit, okay. The Finnish government has agreed to our proposal. Murmansk will be returned to Russia, and with it, the territory of Onega. Our soldiers on the Onegan border have begun celebrating upon hearing the news. Vast paths of drinking, dancing, and singing have been organized in the no man's land along the border with the newly liberated Onegan militias joining in to celebrate the rebirth of Russia with their brothers to the east. Finnish forward units on the border have mostly retained their positions, but a few have been lured over to the celebrations. Likewise, our soldiers have finally peacefully crossed the border to the newly established Karelian autonomy joining their Finnish counterparts in celebration. While some of the Finns view their presence with caution, the majority of our soldiers have been welcomed by their Finnish counterparts. An era of war and strife unending, peace and friendship deserve celebration by soldiers weary of fighting. Peace at last. Ah, that is great. That makes me happy to read. I'll decrease that arms trading. The Finns have caved in. Eastern Karelian Onega Oros. The Port of Murmansk will be returned to us with an autonomous Karelian region. Eastern Karelia will be demilitarized, demilitarized, and freedom of movement will let the Finnish citizens of the region visit their relatives and business partners in Finland proper. Finnish soldiers evaluating the region have done so with a heavy heart. Evacuating the region have done so with a heavy heart, according to our scouts. But this is for the best, as our diplomats in Vyberg have convinced the Finns resistance to this demand would have only resulted in a costly, futile war of resistance. Army is not the disorganized mess it was during the First war Winter War. The Finnish observers are well aware of this. Far better for a non-aggression back and friendship treaty to be signed than for blood to be spilled on the frozen northern soil. Oh, now that is nice. Well, we gotta integrate cola, it seems. The Finns at least seemed reason on the Onegan issue. They released our 
Russian brothers from their bonds and agreed to evacuate Onega. In exchange for Helsinki expects a non-aggression back as well as demilitarization of Onega. For our intentions, only military police have moved into the new district. Fair enough. Oh! That is nice, honestly. I'm happy about that. Who? So let me take a look at all of this. All right, we can do gender equality right off the bat. And all things equal. I know, um, there's a bunch of stuff over here. L there's this little LGBTQ rights thing. And that's, you know, this is sort of one of the, um, uh, for most nations, it, it doesn't do much. Uh, Bukarina's Comey is one of the few nations that can actually go ahead and change that. Which is kind of neat. Kind of fun to see. Um. Hmm. We have a solid industry tree, it looks like. Can integrate Onega. We might want to do that actually. Um, and of course, we have to do it with our immediate political matters. So we might want to get working on the triumph of the Soviets right now. At last, socialism has been reigns as reigned supreme in Russia, and in the way the Soviets intended. However, we must ensure the regime does not become a vast, endless bureaucracy of Communist Party officials, with all governing thanks to f the fear of a leader striking upon them. With its reunification, West Russia proves an ex excellent opportunity to re experiment and prove the effectiveness of true council communism. The workers, councils, the original Soviets will be restored to their positions of power, and they will be the ones to make the decisions through a reform system of government. No one is denying that this won't be an easy task, but this is why the General Secretary has assembled a team of the best people, ready to get down to the work and restore true socialism. I like it. I do. Oh, look. They keep Petsamo. They keep Sala. They keep Karyala. They keep Vipuri. I swear, if any fucking Finns complain in the comment section... I'll I'll refer you to my my, my democratic series. I kicked the, I kicked your fucking teeth in, guys. Okay, it was so bad you went crying for Papa Fascism, whoever he is. Okay, do do, do you want to fuck with me right now? Because I I'll, I'll I'll just fucking invade him out right next time. We can do that. But here we are, a triumph for the Soviets. Truly really a beautiful thing. I think. Ooh, the popularity of government challenge. Ooh, this is a unique one. I don't know if I have the, I've had this one before. Popularity of government shall increase. Industrial expertise, societal development will slowly improve. It looks like there's literally no downside to that. It's not even a hit to our uh, our GDP. Whew. That is good. The cream of the crop. Ah, that's nice to see. Um, I'm curious, can we do a Democrat unification talks. Yeah, we can try to uni unify peacefully, which would be nice. Um, 
It's not the prettiest border with a Corellian autonomy, but I'm glad we could actually do it peacefully. So we can go ahead and assemble the Presidium next, which we'll go ahead and do. To give power to the workers, a system of bicameral legislature has been conceived of a secretary of a general secretary, Bukharina. This Congress of Soviets will be a large body for which hundreds of Soviet representatives, ha hard workers from all across Free Russia, are elected. They, in turn, vote on the members of the Presidium, the Upper House, as Westerners would call it. Presidium members are to be carefully proposed by the General Secretary herself, as we will need the, to be capable of fulfilling their role as their chief advisors and planners. There are many possible candidates for Presidium members. Others are officials from the old Soviet Union, prepared to serve it once again, while others are young rising stars with great ambition. Only the best will be chosen, and if they and they will be assigned to tasks important if we are to reach our further our former glory good stuff really is we have libertarian socialist biased intellectuals why medvedev medvedev that's a familiar name somewhat I'm trying to recall where I know that from. I think like the original um, Aryan Brotherhood guy was a Medvedev. Or something like that. And then they realized, holy shit, why are we saying that a literal fucking war hero of the Soviet Union and an ardent anti-Nazi somehow become a fucking fascist LARPer? And so they had to change that. And now we have um, whatever the fuck's going on in the Aryan Brotherhood right now. Oh, not right now, because, you know, we killed them. If we know what? Hyper hyperbia. Hyperborea, however the fuck you say it. Initiate propaganda programs, that's... Nah. How's our economy looking out so far? Simple Presidium. I'm not impressed by our economy so far, but what are you going to do? No national focus set. What is Soviet humanism? No secret the USSR was uh, not exactly champion human rights. Uh, Bukharina recognizes this and knows of the events that took place in the interwar period of Russia. However, it will be the goal of a new regime to change the public perception of itself from an allegedly totalitarian state to one of equality and opportunity. The age of communication has never been easier to spread a message through radio and on television. The government will use that to its advantage and to reaffirm to its people and to the world that it is dedicated to the principles of humanism. To the egalitarian society that will be different from the failed Soviet Union. Once we have done that, we can begin to make sure it becomes the reality on the ground. And a new era of a nation will be ushered in. Our poverty rate will improve, Soviet humanism, monthly population, poli po uh, political power gain, division recovery rate. That looks fucking great to me. Let's start it. And I, we'll have one more event, and then we'll cut it for now. Bukharina is a woman of measured and deliberate tones, but the exhaustion in her voice is all too real. As she begins the announcement, so too is her triumph. The Congress of the Soviets has been formed with a long struggle over who to select and who to reject for presidium business. It's coming to a close at long last, and the business of a real governance can truly begin. Her hands tremble as she reads aloud the words, each bending to the next, and the Congress registers her candidate with polite and faceless nods. A unionist here, politician there, a general or two thrown in for diversity's sake. She can't quite remember the specifics of everything anymore. Her head is trembling with the effort necessary to stand as it is. But what she does know is that while she was still lucid, she's making measures to build a broad space. She will not repeat the mistakes of her father. Never again will Russia crumble from the errors of a few. She stumbles, almost trips and falls. Panic echoes through the Congress and guards stand to help her up. She waves him off. A leader always stands up before her people, she thinks, and resumes reading. A police officer, one of the few ooh, good ones, she thinks, and she's finished at last. Polite applause comes at her, as her speech ends. She staggers out of the podium, stumbles into her seat, and takes a long, 
long swing of a devil's brew. She barely has time to let it down her throat when the first rejection comes. The Unionist is a good choice, yes, but according to the remarks he made in a speech in the so-and-so factory, his allegiance to the independent unionism are rather in doubt, and for his own capacity to build a revolution, has the chairwoman not noticed his work with so-and-so, Bukharina stares blear blearly into the Congress, head unbowed, something Ron Primal insider wants to burst into a long, silent scream in the space in her head. She indulges it. I hate bureaucracy. And democracy, am I right? I'm joking. Um, yeah, I'm gonna cut it here, just cause I've s Sleep sounds nice. So I'm gonna cut it. Thank you as always for watching, though, ladies and gentlemen. If you liked this video, leave a like. If not, feel free to dislike. If you want to see more of this content in the future, hit the sub button for more uploads every weekday. As well as every Saturday. If you have any comments, feedback, concerns, anything of the sort, leave in the comment section below. I read all the comments I get. I appreciate any all feedback you might have for me. If you want to send a few bucks my way, Check out my Patreon if you're in chat or play games. Check out my Discord. If you want to have a, just a good old time in general, but uh, watch me do sorts of stuff live. Twitch, that's the place to do it. That's it for now, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you as always for watching. My name has been Dogboat333, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.